Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. We start the show this week with the latest on the redevelopment of Wheaton. This week, the County Council took a step forward in the redevelopment of downtown Wheaton. As Susan Kennedy tells us, Council members voted to not designate the Wheaton Recreation Center historic, which paves the way for the center to eventually be torn down and make way for a new community center and Wheaton Library. Susan? Sonia, the County Council has consistently supported the revitalization of downtown Wheaton. And this week, a vote for a new library and rec center for this growing community. Montgomery County has set aside $36 million to build a new combined recreation center and library that will replace the current rec center that's been serving the community for more than 50 years. Planners and preservationists had requested this facility be preserved. However, council members voted to build a new landmark for the community. This particular project, it's the first of its kind. It will be a combination library, uh, recreation center, so it will be one combined facility, um, which will have a lot of synergies uh, where you can, you know, have summer camp activities. You can have a lot of different types of programming um, that you may not otherwise be able to have without the combinations. Last month, the council held public hearings on the matter where they say residents expressed an interest in more green space for the area. Preserving the current building would have cut that green space significantly. Council member Nancy Navarro says the council is investing more than $200 million towards the Wheaton redevelopment and this new state of the art library and rec center will meet the real needs of the community. Overall, what we really wanted to recognize is that this is an importance to the community. And while we certainly understand that some of the pieces of this uh, facility uh, might be things that we need to keep in archive, uh, at the same time, you know, we really have to deliver on uh, a project that's going to uh, keep up with the needs uh, that we're seeing out of this Wheaton community. And that means a very viable rec center uh, that's modern, uh, that's able to address some of the community space needs as well. And so from that perspective, we just really couldn't see it uh, functioning and doing all of those things and meeting the needs of the community while still being designated historic. Council members say some style elements of the old rec center will be incorporated into the new building through a new high quality thoughtful design. There was a lot of uh, recognition of um, the importance of historic preservation, but obviously the building has been in disrepair for so long that to truly bring it up uh, to standard uh, would just be cost prohibitive and it would derail the project as it was uh, proposed. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. At Wheaton High this week, Montgomery County Public Schools announced some key partnerships with the Hispanic Heritage Foundation and Code.org. MCPS TV reports that county students are now learning to create computer code for phone apps, interactive games, and more. Take a look. MCPS celebrated two new partnerships this week that will raise awareness about the importance of computer science and encourage students to pursue technology careers. The event held at Wheaton High School announced the partnership with Code.org and the Hispanic Heritage Foundation. The event included a coding jam session where students learn how to write computer code. I'm grateful for the partnerships of both organizations and their commitment to helping our students be prepared for success in the future. We're all about giving our kids the skills they need to thrive in the 21st century. Um, this partnership will enable us to help our kids have critical coding skills that are going to be part of everyday life. The partnership with Code.org will begin in eight schools where students will have increased access to computer science courses, curriculum, and resources. So at Code.org, we believe that every student deserves the opportunity to learn computer science. Um, and we believe that because it is a foundational skill in the 21st century. It really is also something that's necessary for nearly every field, be that law, medicine, art. Um, there's no field where having computer science knowledge isn't going to be valuable and helpful. Students will uh, be building their own websites, creating interactive games on a programming language called Scratch, telling interactive stories. We're also here to provide uh, professional development for teachers so that teachers who may not have a computer science background are able to prepare themselves to teach this course to students within Montgomery County. So it makes sense to begin to adapt more and offer a lot more opportunities for our students to explore this technology field, this computer coding, you know, in an environment that is engaging and it's fun. The Hispanic Heritage Foundation, through its Leaders on the Fast Track, or LOFT program, introduces minority students to coding as a way to prepare them for technology jobs. What I hope for students is that they are at the very least engaged and inspired uh, and also encouraged that they can actually do this. 
in terms of coding. Um, our biggest thing is also being able to have them uh, prepared for jobs that exist out there. What I love about coding is that it is very expressive, very unique. Uh, it's not as difficult as most people assume it is and you can, you can really go far with it. These two partnerships will promote the importance of coding in all career fields as well as equip students with the skills they'll need to compete for computer and technology related jobs. Just a few days after announcing his recommended fiscal year 2015 budget and sending it over to the county council for approval, Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett was interviewed at the county Spanish language radio show. Our Lorna Virgili also hosts that show and joins us with details about what the executive wants the Hispanic community to know about his budget. del Condado Montgomery, el señor Ike Leggett. Welcome, Mr. Leggett. Bienvenido. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be back. Así es. Montgomery El Día, or Montgomery Today, is the county's award-winning Spanish language radio show. And County Executive Ike Leggett took to the airwaves to highlight some of the items of his proposed FY15 operational budget. $4.970 billion. That's I mean, a whole, that's right. I got it, I got it this time. <laughs> that's a whole lot of money, isn't that's it? That's a lot of money. That's <laughs> larger than probably, you know, half a dozen states or so. The budget devotes record spending for Montgomery County public schools and having Hispanic County residents know firsthand that education continues to be his priority was important to Mr. Leggett. Right. We, um, provided 2.164 billion, about 3.4 percent increase for the school system. Uh, my direct budget carries about 26 billion over and above the maintenance of effort level. And there's another 11 million dollars that they have in their reserves. So it's a total of 37 million that I think they could utilize over and above the maintenance of effort level. So it's a fairly uh, significant increase for school systems. Leggett also stressed his proposed funding for patrol units in Wheaton in the Germantown Business District and the hiring of 23 additional police officers. He also highlighted English as a second language and how his budget supports expansion of some programs that provide English language classes to adults. And last year I provided an additional $100,000 for English training for adults. Uh, through the McHale program. El año pasado proveímos unos 100 mil dólares adicionales a través del programa de McHale para lo que son las clases de inglés. Right. Como and this year we este provided an additional $100,000. Sí, y este año pues eh, pusimos en el presupuesto una vez más 100 mil dólares adicionales. It's my objective to try to find as many dollars as we can to help support those who are interested in speaking English. For more information on the budget or to view Montgomery al día, visit montgomerycountymd.gov. For County Report this week, in Wheaton, I'm Lorna Virgili. Members of the Korean community recently hosted an appreciation event to thank County Executive Ike Leggett for including over $5 million in community grants in his fiscal year 2015 proposed budget. What that means is that hundreds of nonprofit and community-based organizations will receive funding to carry out their services. For the Korean community in particular, the recommended budget includes over one half a million dollars in assistance to four organizations. The Korean Association of the State of Maryland, the Korean American Association of the Washington Metropolitan Area, the Korean Community Service Center of Greater Washington, and the Korean American Senior Citizens Association. This is not just within the Korean community. I think all of the grant programs received a little bit more this year. We provided a little bit of an increase uh, because we have been uh, somewhat uh, reduced in the last few years. So uh, this is just a reflection of what we've done, not just this year, but many years from past. So uh, this organization or the organizations that you see here are providing valuable services in terms of health, uh, wellness, uh, housing, language, and it's not something that the government can do, nor should we be doing all of that, but we can support the organizations, especially the Korean organizations, that are in fact doing those, engaged in. Speaking of the budget, the Montgomery County Council will hold five budget public hearings in April, where the elected leaders hope to hear about what in the budget is important to you. The public hearings are scheduled from April 8th through April 10th. All the hearings will be held in the third floor hearing room of the council office building in Rockville. The number of speaker spots is limited, so residents should call 240-777-7803 to sign up to testify. For more information, visit the council's website. The Montgomery County Council is seeking applicants for the Montgomery County Planning Board, that, and so far really just a few the, people uh, have applied. Council have President Craig Rice stressed the importance of this open position questions. at his weekly briefing with the news media. 
this is a, a tremendous position uh, that I think uh, ties into a great civic responsibility when it comes to ensuring and shaping the vision of Montgomery County and its future. Uh, so this is a position that will be taken very seriously uh, by the council in terms of making sure that we put forth uh, a person who is aligned uh, with what we see as Montgomery County's vision, but also its commitment uh, to its constituents in terms of involving them in the process. Uh, and so uh, we continue to make sure we're using all aspects of uh, media. So I hope that people that are watching at home will make sure that they spread the word that we are looking for uh, planning board director uh, and uh, look forward to receiving more applications. For more information about the open planning board seat and how to apply, visit the council's website. The deadline for applications is April 7th. When we come back, we'll take you to a networking event at the studios of Montgomery Community Media, where some of our county's small business owners learned about making connections with the county's growing Hispanic community. We'll also tell you how the city of Rockville is shining a light on its business community. Stay with us. We'll be right back. April 22nd, take part in the most creative and collaborative day of the year as Montgomery Community Media hosts a day in the life of Montgomery County. On Earth Day, April 22nd, snap a pic or shoot some video and send it to pics at mymcmedia.org. Not long after, your photos and videos will show up on our website and may even show up on our channels. To learn more, visit mymcmedia.org to find out how you can play your part. Mark your calendars, Earth Day, April 22nd, for a day in the life of Montgomery County. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. With the Hispanic population in Montgomery County growing in record numbers, a recent networking event at the studios of Montgomery Community Media in Rockville focused on helping businesses reach out and connect. My MC Media's Valerie Bonk reports. Small businesses were the focus of a networking event here at Montgomery Community Media Studios in Rockville, where local business owners came together to learn how to develop and build their brand among the growing Hispanic consumer market. You need to know the target audience, and that means who are the Hispanics here in Montgomery County? The answer to this question was the focus of a presentation by Lorna Virgili, the president and CEO of the National Hispanic Communications Group, and the official Spanish language spokesperson for Montgomery County. Her talk focused on helping local business owners identify and reach out to the different cultural groups within the Hispanic community. It is obvious that you cannot ignore the Hispanic market anymore. You need to know who the Hispanics are within your community because we are not all the same. For local business owners, the event gave them ideas of how to engage and communicate with the rapidly growing Hispanic community in the county. It was nice to actually be able to hear specific strategies that we should do, you know, going to census.gov, um, contacting the big news media outlets that reach that community and really starting to build relationships. She talked about how basically to brand your Yourself or to reach out uh, to the Hispanic market utilizing social media, print media, radio, TV. It is different because uh, we are from different places, you know, even that we talk and speak the same language, um, we, we have different, you know, like uh, we like different things. And when it comes to tapping into the Hispanic market, it's all about finding your niche. The vast majority of Hispanics that we have in Montgomery County come from El Salvador. So with that being said, and knowing perhaps that the rest of them, the vast majority come from Central America, your advertising has to cater to that community in this region. Learn exactly what the needs are. The Hispanic community is not the same. We are not just uh, in, a, in a big bag buying exactly the same thing or living the same way. For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Vaughn. Every year, the city of Rockville makes it a point to give some special attention to its business community. Rockville 11's Katie Giardi joins us with details about this year's event. I'm Rockville 11's Katie Giardi. During Rockville's Business Appreciation Week, the city recognizes local business for the hard work they put in to make the economy thrive. Once a year, uh, we have a big re business retention effort where we go out and visit over 50 companies in the city of Rockville in one week uh, to learn more about them, see what they're up to, see if there are ways we can assist them, and really it's a great opportunity for us to say thank you for doing business in the city of Rockville. Owners also get a chance to build a relationship with the city. Founder of the Executive Advisory Service, Homes and Associates, Kirk Holmes says Rockville is a great location for his business. 
Um, being in Rockville is very convenient. I've been here for at least uh, about, about 14 years now, and I find it very convenient because everything I need is here. Uh, there is both the um, a good location for my customers to get here, as well as easy for me to access other services. It's very important that we all come together in Rockville and, and uh, work together. You know, great neighborhoods build great schools and great businesses help those neighborhoods and those schools. So Rockville is all about a big community and the larger community includes our business community. The city recognizes all types of businesses, like Sniffer's Doggy Daycare. It's a great area for our business. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of people with dogs um, and a lot of people who take great care of their dogs. The city uses their visits to gauge how Rockville's businesses are doing. We host a wrap-up breakfast uh, and all of the data and information that we've gathered from those companies over the week-long uh, visits that we make uh, will present that information in the aggregate so that we can uh, see a trend for the businesses in the community. If they're growing, if they're hiring, if they were having issues or challenges uh, and it, it gives us really a great uh, snapshot of the pulse of the business community right now. To learn more about Business Appreciation Week, contact Ready at 301-315-8096. For Rockville 11, I'm Katie Giardi. As the weather gets warmer, many of us may be spending more time on the water. Joining us in the studio right now to talk about water safety and the Potomac River is Fire Chief Steve Lohr. Chief? Well, uh, over time, the Potomac River and specifically the Potomac River Gorge, uh, the portion that borders Montgomery County, has become a really hazardous place to uh, live, work, or play. And there's several logical reasons for that. Uh, so I'd like to share with you some, some facts about the Potomac River that maybe the, uh, the average uh, person who visits the river wouldn't recognize. First of all, it is a beautiful and picturesque uh, piece of Montgomery County. So the, the folks that visit the shoreline and uh, go to the observation deck at Great Falls are just simply enamored with its overall beauty. But what I would ask is your fire chief is to not ignore the dangers associated with that. The Potomac River, and specifically the 12 miles of the Potomac River adjacent to Montgomery County that we call the Potomac River Gorge, uh, goes from wide to narrow. What does that mean? It means that the velocity of the water flow increases substantially over the course of those 12 miles. Secondly, and equally important, is the elevation changes from a high to a low of over 80 feet in a short period of time. That also increases the risk to people in the river and can get caught up in eddies and jets and whirlpools uh, if they purposefully enter the, the river or if they accidentally slip, trip, or fall into the river and become caught up in this. Uh, we have had an uh, unusual high number of drownings even amongst uh, skilled swimmers, trained athletes, and Regrettably, sometimes people that just don't recognize the danger uh, of what appears to be a tranquil river setting, not knowing what the undercurrents and, and those kind of things are. There are signs posted up and down the river banks on both the uh, Maryland and Virginia side of the Potomac River. We ask that you honor those warnings, uh, that you have let others know when you are near or on the river and what your circumstances are, and to just respect Mother Nature for what she presents there. It's not our desire to limit uh, access to the picturesque beauty of the Potomac River, but it is our job to prevent you from a uh, life-altering event on the Potomac River. Chief, thank you so much for joining us. The information you provided is important and timely. When we come back, we'll tell you about a delegation from India that recently visited Montgomery College. And Tiger Woods is gearing up for his PGA tournament at Congressional Country Club. Stay with us, there's a lot more to come.
Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The Montgomery County Council recently proclaimed April 22nd a day in the life of Montgomery County. This county-wide event is organized by Montgomery Community Media and takes place on Earth Day. We at Montgomery Community Media are proud with our partners to be a part of this very special project. Again, we live in an enormously diverse county in terms of family and faith and communities and neighborhoods and schools and, and geography of every kind. And so this is a project uh, over a single 24-hour period. We're going to capture all that, or at least as much as we possibly can, again, through community contributions, not just MCM and its partners, but community contributions of every kind. So uh, again, we encourage people on the day, April 22nd, to uh, wherever you are, wherever whatever's happening in your life or your home, your school um, to capture it in, a, in a, uh, some photos or a short video and either uh, Twitter it over to us or email us, uh, it to us at uh, pix, P -I -X, at mymcmedia.org, pix at mymcmedia.org, and it's just that simple. And log on to our website and see your own photos along with hopefully hundreds if not thousands of other photos also generated by your fellow Montgomery County residents. You can find out more information about how you and your organization can get involved in the day in the life of Montgomery County by visiting the MyMC Media website. It's often stated that Montgomery College is one of the nation's best community colleges, and recently some international guests paid a visit to study its institutional models. MCTV has the story. On March 24th, a delegation of higher education administrators from India toured Montgomery College's Germantown and Rockville campuses as part of the International Education Administrator Seminar to learn best practices from America's community college model. They've come over through a very competitive application process. They had to demonstrate a strong background in the U.S. community college system and a strong desire to take our best practices and implement those back in India. And so we're thrilled to be on a week-long tour of top U.S. community colleges. Montgomery College quickly rose to the top as an exceptional example of an institute partnered with local industry, with immense amounts of technology, with great faculty development, curriculum development, and also a campus that is quickly globalizing. I am really happy to see the tremendous uh, development of the college in terms of its infrastructure facilities. There's a far-sighted vision for the college and an excellent partnership uh, with industries. I was amazed to hear that it is serving students from 170 countries of the world. It's really a global college. I have visited maybe so far in my various trips more than about 35 colleges in the United States and I would consider this as one of the best ones. After touring Montgomery College, the delegation headed off to Seattle and New York to visit other institutions. For County Report This Week, I'm Dan Rankin. You can ride for free on Ride On Buses and help feed the hungry in our community. Passengers receive free bus rides by donating canned or non-perishable food during Ride On's annual food drive from Sunday, April 6th through Saturday, April 12th. Food collected goes to Mana Food Center, which feeds over 3,600 families a month. During the given ride promotion, food collection bags will be placed near the fare boxes on all ride-on buses. Those who do not ride the bus but wish to donate food can participate by giving their donations to a bus operator at any ride-on bus stop. The PGA Tour and Tiger Woods Foundation announced this week that Quicken Loans has signed a multi-year agreement to become the title sponsor of the Quicken Loans National beginning this year. The golf tournament is scheduled to take place June 23rd to June 29th at the Congressional Country Club in Bethesda. The tournament, now in its eighth year, has become one of the premier sporting events in our area, welcoming 150,000 fans to watch 120 of the world's best golfers compete for a $6.5 million purse. You can find out more about this year's tournament by visiting the Tiger Woods Foundation's website. When we come back, we'll uncover a beloved penguin mural in Silver Spring and share some highlights of the H2O Summit in Silver Spring. Don't go away. County Report This Week is coming right back. The Sandy Spring Bank has generously donated a gift to Montgomery College to fund a scholarship for MC's Achieving Collegiate Excellence and Success Program. ACES is a partnership among MC, MCPS, and the universities at Shady Grove that helps provide students with a seamless pathway from high school to community college to a university. 
Registration is now open for MC's Summer Youth Program. Over 200 full and half-day courses are offered for students K-12. through Classes are offered on a wide range of topics. A group of MC students spent spring break working hard in Alabama. The students volunteered with Habitat for Humanity and helped rebuild homes that had been destroyed by a 2011 tornado. To see the WVUA news story from Alabama, search for From Maryland to Tuscaloosa on YouTube. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. It's been more than 10 years since the Penguin Mural was removed from its spot under the Silver Spring Metro Station, yet it is still remembered by many. In this next report, my MC Media's Valerie Bonk tells us where the mural is being stored and what's next for the popular art piece. Take a stroll through downtown Silver Spring and they're hard to miss. Penguins, the black and white waddling birds known for their happy feet, have become an integral part of the busy urban area, seen on street signs and even taking over the Veterans Plaza ice rink. The penguin is the symbol of Silver Spring and the little kids just absolutely love it. My grandkids come and we ice skate with penguins. While the official mascot of Silver Spring is the acorn, the unofficial mascot has been adopted as the penguin, with references to the bird seen throughout the area, including here in the Civic Building windows. But the story behind the penguin craze is hidden, kept under wraps in a locked room at the Silver Spring Civic Building. The 100-foot, 25-panel mural designed by artist Sally Calmer first brought penguins to the downtown area. I think the penguin mural really represents that, that, that joyfulness that is uh, downtown Silver Spring. Installed in the 80s, it was originally planned to be displayed for only a year in the underpass at the Silver Spring Metro. But the mural quickly became part of the daily routine of commuters and was purchased by the Washington Transit Authority to be displayed permanently. To the disappointment of many, the mural began to peel and was taken down to be refurbished almost 10 years ago. It had the, uh, the penguins on there like us going to work with the briefcases and uh, everything and it was just fantastic. I just loved looking at it. But then I was sad when they took it away. Through funds raised in a Pennies for Penguins campaign, the mural is now ready to be reinstalled, but is awaiting the completion of the Silver Spring Transit Center. And when ready, we will reinstall them back, back where they belong. For those that walk through the area, the news of the mural's return is much awaited. I've seen the penguins in Silver Spring for a long time, and then when we get them back in, under the uh, metro, It'll look amazing. This brings beauty and character to Silver Spring. Who doesn't love a penguin? For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Bonk. Hundreds of residents recently gathered for the H2O Summit, hosted by the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection and WSSC at the Silver Spring Civic Building. There were group discussions about topics such as managing stormwater, and the free event included a family fair that showcased water-related exhibitors and watershed groups. A major goal of the summit is to raise awareness about stream health and to remind us how our everyday actions impact stormwater pollution and our ecosystem. Most importantly, it encourages residents to participate in pollution prevention. For more information about stormwater management or to learn about the incentives the county provides for being environmentally conscious, visit mygreenmontgomery.org. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week, a cat named Garden. Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society has more. This is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week, and this is Garden. She's a two-year-old spayed female, domestic short hair, really nice cat, loves to cuddle, and she's looking for a home. She is currently in our foster care program, so go to our website at mchumane.org and check out our foster animals. And we are always looking for new foster owners, too. So give us a call at 240-773-5960 or check out that website. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We're going to leave you now with the sights and sounds of construction and new development in downtown Rockville. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.